What I want to do is simulate two spheres colliding. So this is the maths involved in doing that. So the idea here is to just sort of do collisions between spheres, and I'm not taking into account any kind of spin on the ball or anything like that. But uh, what's good about this is that you can see how, how you can use Desmos. So um, I'm just going to give it a go. There's this big formula that we'll get to at some point. But I've got, since the notes for this are on the work computer, it'd be interesting. I'll have to redo it all again. We're going to do two spheres. Um, so if I do x squared plus y squared equal 1, up to x squared, x squared plus y squared. And if you if you want to follow along, you can follow along if you get onto desmos.com um, and just use the circumflex thing above the six to get the squares in there. And then equal one. And then I've got myself a a nice circle. And that's because you know if you use Pythagoras each x and y that you could possibly have would be like a triangle and the one is the long side of the triangle which if it's one means in effect give me all the points on the graph that are a distance from the center of one that's just a way of drawing a circle uh, if you want the radius of the circle it would need to be r uh, squared i'm going to make uh, i'm going to have two balls so i'm going to make this r one squared now I can change the size of my um, ball, which I'm going to sort of... So, okay, we have one. I'm going to just do another and with R2. And so now we have actually two uh, spheres. Look at that. Ah. And then um, I need to be able to position them somewhere. So I'll put the first ones on P1. I'm going to just put in here X1, comma Y1. Uh, and then that gives me this and I'm going to connect it to the first ball which is this one and the way of doing that is I can offset this in here like so and I can subtract the x and y of the coordinates which I'm going to do here minus x1 and this one minus y1 So I've got that there, and then uh, if I want to do this, I can I, I can do the other one here. So we're going to just take this uh, minus uh, x2, x2 squared, minus y2. And uh, I think I'm going to make P2 equal X2 comma Y2 as well. And then here, look, we've, we've, got, we've got a thing. So it can go here, boom, boom. Here I now have two spheres, right? So that's good. And that would be great if I could sort of have a starting point and um, and an ending point. Um, well, rather, let's say have a velocity. Shall I try and put some velocity into here? Now, we could call the velocity V1 and V2. Let me try. V1 equals... Oh, I'm going to try something sneaky here. Um, let me do Vx1. That's the x coordinate of the velocity of one and v y one on here like so and this might be the velocity of the y ball which which is which anyway uh, let me put here one and on this one two so we can see which is which this is ball number two ball number one this is going to be the velocity one it would be nice if I had that kind of relative to here. I might be able to do that by coming into here and doing V uh, plus 
plus x1, and over here we can do plus y1. And I don't know if, oh, it's kind of the wrong way around. It's like they're moving. <laughs> That's not quite what I wanted. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, what I really want is to have, I've managed to do this before with Desmos where you can have them sort of chain together. Yeah, I don't know. It's like X, X1 plus, let me try it the other way. Oh, VX1. Oh, look, it is different if you swap them. <laughs> I think that's a little hacky, but... VY1. Why, why does it like that? Oh, because it should be Y1, not V1. Y1, V... Oh, look at that. Yeah. This is, there we are. This is going to represent the velocity. And this is going to be the velocity of the ball. So it's going to, the position of the ball at time one. We go from time zero to time one in that time. And then we'll uh, try to get the other one in. So we'll do the velocity of V2. Now V2 equals V2, V2, V2. why I have that one there I don't need that one and then this with two and this two does it work yay right and now I need to <clears throat> uh, be able to sort of have a master value of time which will put time of, of zero so what I'm going to do now is uh, I, I want, as T changes, I can set it there so it kind of animates, right? And maybe I'll set it so it goes in the same direction. Boom. And um, what we'll do is we'll move, we'll have the balls move and track in that way. So I want the position of the ball at time T. I'm going to call that pt1 and pt2 why not p underscore t1 is equal p1 p uh, p1 plus because that's p1 is, is set to a somewhere in here there it is it's a point which has an x and a y so th this is in effect a vector which is quite handy and uh, so i go p1 plus the velocity which is velocity one multiplied by t Oh, right, here's a little trick. If you're using Desmos, you will um, look at that and you think, what, why, why doesn't it like this? It's because all of this expression has ended up in, in the subscript. So you have to push on the right arrow to get, you know, it to move out. Now, that's correct. So what I'm going to do, it's a bit annoying, that P1 plus V1 capital T. Ah. Uh, Whoa. Something is happening, but um, I, I suspect, um, yeah, that doesn't look quite correct, does it? So let's just check uh, V2. So this is the velocity vector for two. Um, and then somewhere in here, I've got myself v, uh, V1, which is the velocity vector for V1. So we're going to like so I just don't know does this affect the oh it's do oh I know why it's because it's actually relative to the origin you see this so um that isn't quite what I wanted oh Oh, right. Well, maybe I need to... Let me just try something here. It's like on V1. Maybe I can do minus. Oh, look at that. 
No, that didn't work either. So I will, I know what I need to do. I'll put this back where it is and I'll just put this as V1P and V2P because those are just like the positions of the marker on uh, the actual literal positions of these things here. Um, and where's VP1 gone? Oh, there it is. Right. And then I need to derive the actual velocity. V1 is equal uh, V1P. V1P. Minus P1. And then I think we should be good. If I take this, I can... Yeah, look at that. So that's the velocity. Aha! Uh -huh. ah, I like that. And now we're going to set up a similar thing for the, the second, second one here, which we do is the V2, V2P, V1P minus, or V2, there we go. Um, and that is um okay i can turn that off turn that off we don't need those and what i need to do is set up the movement of the second ball so that's here to this da 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 and now i've got and just i've got to just make a range of naught to two seconds instead so that they don't keep disappearing off the screen so that's fine that's a time zero the position is of the balls are where they are at one and two and then at time uh, t it's going to uh, move but i want to draw those balls as they move so i think we can do that with some more of this action and here i'm gonna put this and instead of um using x2 we're going to use um P underscore T1, so that's the position of the ball at time T, dot X, that's the X co coordinate. My monitor keeps flashing. Um, I don't think it's affecting you, but it's annoying. I, I think I have a too long a video cable um, as, as I'm sitting at the desk here. The, the computer is over there. Um, it's a bit annoying. Keeps keeps blinking. Um, anyway, we're on this like so, and there we are. So um, let me change the color of this to be color, color, color. If I hold on this, I should. It's not working. Hang on, hold on there. It's not letting me change the color. Ah, there's a glitch. I can put, um, say, a dotted line in there. I can also make it a bit thinner. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. So what you have is there's the ball moving over time. And um, I'm going to set up the second one. Oh, let's make the colour the same. Oh, come on. Yeah, it's 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 definitely a bit buggy, this. You're supposed to hold on to that, and I can change the colour normally. It doesn't seem to register. So anyway, we'll put on that. That looks good. And then um, the white one... And let's take this guy here. So that's the ball at time zero, and the dotted one is the ball at time t. And um, we're going to say do an orange one here. That's fine. And then I can take this and copy that there, and then I'm going to make this for the second ball. And then hopefully 
we will have both of them go only I've got to get the right R's in there so that's R1 yeah that's actually wrong that should be R1 and these are R2 that's that's correct okay that's it let's see oh right then I managed to get that and I'll put that one and um, I want to also put the same color so how's that yeah, yeah and it's yes yeah, it's sort of totally interactive it's like you're seeing everything change as I change the initial velocity so then it becomes possible in this way to set up a situation where they will actually collide so like like this so it'd be quite nice if we can make it so they bounce off each other so I'm going to try to do problem is I need to have a formula for um, when they collide which is an interesting problem so what I have is the position of the ball at time t I call pt1 and pt2 so if we have pt1 and pt2 then uh, what we're interested in at the point of collision the distance between the centers of the two balls would be uh, the sum of the two radii as in at this point here you've got r1 and r2 you need to add add them together so for example if we made one of these balls bigger it will change the result right so to know when the two balls will collide what you're looking for is the time when uh, the distance between the centers of the ball is the same as the sum of the radii of the two balls are you following me so um, that would be r1 plus r2 so what we want is the distance between the two uh, balls and uh, these are all no, these are not vectors r1 and r2 are not vectors but these are vectors so i think i'll just show that by putting uh, an arrow sort of on the top and um, that's the distance between the two balls at time t and so all we have to do is really simple <laughs> is we have to uh, work out the value of t that makes that true so uh, what value of what true though the distance between these the the oh well if we use the dot product of the two uh that's wrong <laughs> if we subtract the two <laughs> if we subtract the two we get the vector let me move this over here for a minute if you subtract the, the two vectors from each other then at that point you've got the vector from one to the other that's right and it's the length of that that kind of matters and if you want to do that in sort of with vectors we can do the following all right so i've got those two and then i put a dot so the dot product of a vector with itself is the same thing as the square of the uh, length of the vector the square of the magnitude of the vector why is that uh, oh you want to recap okay dot product of two vectors a dot b equals the length of a multiplied by the length of b multiplied by the cosine of the angle between them which is equal a x b x plus a i said x i wrote y a x b x plus a y b y but if the two vectors are the same that's really the same thing as saying uh, a um, dot a is equal to 
the length of A, right, the length of A, multiplied by the length of A, multiplied by the cosine of theta, where theta is the angle between A and A. Hi, Michael, how are you doing? Good to see you. Yeah, so the cosine of theta, but we're doing the dot product of a vector against itself. So the angle between a vector and itself is zero, and the cosine of zero is one, as you should remember from the unit circle, uh, such that this is the cosine on this axis, this is the sine on this axis, this is radius one, this is the angle of zero, cosine one, cosine of zero equals one. Um, so you remember all of that so this means that cosine of this is actually the cosine of zero in this case but the cosine of zero is one so therefore this disappears and it's the length of a times the length of a which is the square of a uh, which is great which is equal to oh hang on because this is also a, a, and then a, and a, or which is <laughs> the same thing as uh, a, x squared plus uh, b plus a, y squared. Oh, it's x squared plus y squared. Uh, well, yeah, that's the square <laughs> magnitude uh, squared. Uh, well, we had it there as well. You can see how it all fits together. You, look, you, t sh you, 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 dot product. <laughs> I'm basically showing, I was basically proving how the dot product of a vector with itself uh, gives you um, the square of the length. Um, so, right, so continuing with this, we want this to equal that squared um so i think that's important otherwise it's wrong and it's right now squared okay and so if it, what we're basically saying is we want to find the value of t when this is true we know r1 we know r2 um we know how to calculate pt1 and pt2 so maybe we should take a look at what those are because we're not going to get any further what are these unless we do pt1 pt1 the vector pt1 is equal p1 because p1 is uh, the starting position of the ball at time zero and then we want to add to it the velocity of the of the ball multiplied by t in the plot over here it's capital t but i'm going to use a small t here um, so yeah, that's the position of the ball at time t is the position of the ball at time zero plus the velocity of the ball times t. Okay, and then, uh, well, we can just do that again. So here we go, boom. And uh, maybe with a little a small modification on here, because instead of being one, now we need to make it two, 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 two. These are vectors as well. That's, oop, that's a vector, that's a vector. And that's a vector. This is a vector. Okay, so what we need to do is put this in here. <laughs> we can put we can put this in here and this in here, where it's a PT one and PT two. This gets a bit hairy, so I don't know how I'm going to if I'm going to manage to do this. Uh, we'll see. Whatever. Take the plunge. The principle is right. I'm, I'm just checking as I'm stalling here. Uh, I think that's correct. So um, now we know what the dot product actually is if we multiply, you know, if we, if we, I, we, we just said what this was actually. I mean, I can write it here. This is the same thing as saying P T one x that's the x coordinate of pt1 uh, minus p t p t oh hang on a minute p t2 yeah p t2 x sorry oh, sorry p t2 x right 
um, squared plus p t one y minus p t two y squared. I think this is correct because what I've got, what I'm doing is the dot product of the difference between the two things. It's basically the square of the uh, difference in x plus the square of the difference in y is equal to that. So I think I just I can get rid of this now. I don't think I really need that. Um, I think this is the equivalent here, and this is no longer in vectors. None. There are no vectors here. Um, well take this and uh, maybe shrink it a bit I'll pop it up there so if we continue from here what we what we need to do now is get the expression for pt1x that must be equal something um, so let's have a look pt1x and pt1x is equal you just follow the pattern here, P1x plus V1x times T. So all I've done is instead of using vectors, I've just done this thing here um, with the X coordinate. Then I, I can repl duplicate that. Um, it will need to be for y. So let's just put a y in there. And then I can take that. No, I'm not programming games. What I'm doing now, here, right now, is I've got PT1x and PT1y equals that and it, we need to do the same thing for two unfortunately so it starts getting more hairy there because we need to replace the one with a two actually you know what I'm just going to write the two here because it's a bit easier and then I can take this little thing here and then we go two 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 paints actually really nice for this type of thing it's like look at that you can just go so easily oh until you screw up <laughs> two 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 yeah come on Oh, right, okay. So easy. <laughs> Two. So, where are we? We've got four formulae. Do you follow? Are you following? It's like the, pos the X position of the first ball, X position of the second ball, Y position of the first ball and y position on the second ball so um i have these now what i want to do is to figure out how to solve this um this equa <laughs> this equation right because what i i i have this which is this so i need to substitute i need to put this into here right and I need to put this uh, into PTY into here and so on. I basically got to put them all in. So um, let's let's try and do that. I think I'm going to need a bit of space. Right. So what we do PT1X PT. If I, I need to take this, I'm going to copy that and put that here. That's this one P. Right. And then PT2X, which is this one. And I could take that and put that here. 
and then we're subtracting one from the other. So I need to put parentheses in here and then put in a minus. Um, anyway, so what I've got there is um, <clears throat> this times this, and then that needs to be all squared. So that's this one here. Plus, I, I, I don't know. Oh, no. Seriously? Why did I start doing this? Is this, this a nightmare? Well, to do this, I've done this all before, but I'm going to do it now again. We'll see. PTP1Y. I bet if John Hare was doing this, he'll have finished it half an hour ago. He's that good. How's that? P one P uh, blah 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 blah. So that's this bit here. I have just and oh, it's not that bad. I thought it was going to go on forever. That's simply equal to um this that, that's equal to this here we go Ta -da! p one x plus v one x t minus p two x plus p two x t all squared plus p one y plus v one y t minus p two y plus v two y t all squared equals the square of the sum of the radii of the things. I think this is correct. And so what I'm going to do is I can see that's correct. So I'm just going to get rid of all of this. We don't need that anymore because I can see that that is correct. It's it's not really that hard. What I want to do is I need to pull T out. As you see. <laughs> yeah, I see you, see you, Amiga. I need to find the value of t that uh, solves this, and so to do that, it might be good if I start um, multiplying out everything. So what I'm going to do is expand these out because I want to get rid of these squares so um, thing is we end up with four terms oh I'll try rewriting yeah, I need to get rid of these parentheses. So I'm going to do this as P1X minus P2X. Plus V1XT minus v 2 X T and all of that is squared plus P one Y minus P two Y. Plus, did I get this the right way around? Yeah. V1YT 
minus, because there's a minus on there, V2YT squared equals R1 plus R2 squared. So how's that? P1X minus P2X plus V1X minus V2XT. P... P1Y minus P2Y and V1YT minus V2YT. P1X minus P2X, V1X minus that one, and then blah, blah, blah. Right. And so if I want to expand this, I can do it by saying it's this squared plus this squared plus two times this uh, times this. So I'll have to expand this out. P1X minus P2X squared plus V1X T minus V two X T squared. No, not squared. Multiply by P one X minus P two X Oh yeah, all right it was was right actually, yeah, so now I can take this one and put this here, and then plus that squared. So that's P2, X, V1, uh, blah, 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 blah. Right, and that's just expanded that one. And then we have to do on there plus uh, a similar thing done for the other side, which is going to be this squared plus this times this plus <laughs> that's fine I'm sure I will, I'm sure something will happen eventually. So we take this plus, and that's squared, plus two times this plus that plus that squared equals that. So we've got P1X minus P2X squared plus 2 times V1XT minus V2XT multiplied by P1 plus V1XT minus V2XT squared. No, this is this is some something of a mathematical madness. I, I agree. So what I'm going to do is take this lot and just shrink it down a bit. So because I'm probably going to have to debug this, so, you know, we we'll pop this here. Maybe shrink this down a bit. No, I'm not going to shrink it down yet. So I'm just going to double check the work. So having rearranged this into this squared plus this squared, I can do that squared plus two times that and that plus that squared plus this squared, which comes from there, plus two times this times this plus this squared equals that and um we've got to carry on so that we can pull out the t 
So I need to multiply out, whoops, I need to multiply this out because that's another squared. So if you, right, let, let's just do it. P one X squared minus two times P one X P two X plus P two X squared. And then Uh, I hate this. I, I hate it. It's horrible. This is this is a rabbit hole. I'm scared. P one P one x squared. I'm going to check my work. P one x squared minus two times over like that. But because I have to also multiply this out. Oh, just do it. Just do it, Dino. Just do it. Stop it. Stop fussing. Just do it. If you want to multiply these out, we get 2 V1XT multiplied by P1X minus V2XT P1X. That times that. That times that. Um, plus V one X T P two X and plus V two X T P two X So this is this times itself minus two times that times that plus this squared minus expanding this out two times V one X T P one X minus V two X T P one X plus Right, this is a minus. I have a, a sign wrong here. Just double checking this was wrong. That should actually be a minus. Because that's this times this, which is that's a minus, so that's that's fine. And then these two minuses multiply together. The final one is Oh here, sorry. <laughs> this this times this. Now I'm up here. This times that. This times that. This times that. This times that. And then we've got to, to do the plus expansion of this. V1XT squared Hang on a minute. V one X T squared, that's better. Plus V two X T squared plus two times V one X T V two X T Oh Sorry, that was too sophisticated for me. V one X T squared, V two X T squared plus two times V one X T V. All right, minus. Just 
just check the working out T two times that minus that p1x p2x plus p2x squared minus two times oh there's a mistake it's two times everything so that's two times that two times that and two times that because there's a two there so and then xt squared plus v2 squared minus two times that times that that looks right problem is that's one half we have to do the whole thing again for y and um, i'm just going to do that like this so what i'm going to have to do is um, i'm going to shrink this now And what we have to do is um, convert the x here into the y. Yep, because then we need to put the y in. Because one of the things I want to do is to sort of not scare people, have people not be afraid of maths. Admittedly, this is a very strange way of going about it. No, but I mean, seriously, it's, this is probably quite therapeutic because, um, I get stressed by maths. Why? I want to know why it stresses me. It shouldn't. It's because it's just like everything else. It's connected with some of the stuff I was saying before. It's like, hey, can't we just sort of chill, get it done? What's scary about it is that if I made a mistake, anywhere along the line then i would have to do it again but what does it matter if i do it again then i'll be practicing doing maths so why does it matter if i had to do it again it's not like i'm doing this for my job This is perhaps I'm doing this now because it's like a metaphor for life. It's easy as pie. <laughs> hmm. You need to check this. One thing you can do is check the pattern. Well, in this case, I'll check that I have Y in here. Y, 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 Y. There are no stray X's in there. When we look at P, say, 1X squared plus P2X squared. Yeah, I, I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to uh, shrink this down as well. I, I, I think it's correct. We, we will see. So if... What I need to do now is just collect because you see, when I'm looking at this, I'm going to. 
if you look at it, you see that there are different kinds of terms in here. We are actually making progress because this is like one with just a T, right? And then we can have um, T squared. There's T squared around here somewhere. There should be a T squared around here somewhere. Oh, yes, it's there. But I just realized that some of this was a bit V to X T. These T's are not subscripts. So I just need to make sure that that is clear. P one X squared minus two P one X P two X plus P two X squared plus two V one X T. Just to help with this, I think I'm going to underline in green where I have the term minus v2 x right this t I got confused and I made it a subscript but it's not a subscript it is just a t and I'll need to do that check that with the others as well Ow. A lot of why, 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 but not a lot of when, what, or how. Well, it's because in the end, only why matters, it turns out. Uh, it's like... <laughs> rest of it doesn't really matter very much. So this one, I have to correct this because this is slightly... It's all of this squared right so this becomes the following if i take that out and i can sort of move this oh where were we here right this i'm just move this to here and this should actually be t squared um, so actually I can show that like this so this is also t squared and this is that multiplied by t And that T, because this becomes a squared. X and Y went into a bar. And out came 42. I'm not following. <laughs> put that there and also have a squared here and VT and then this right so let me underline the T's P1 X squared minus 2 P1 X P2 X plus P2 X squared plus V1 X T P1 X minus V2 minus 2 V2 X T there's another T and there's a T and this is a T squared and this is a T squared and this becomes a T squared as well. And this one, here we have a T and then we have another T and we have another T, another T, a T squared, T squared. And there will be another t squared there. It's just getting late. Absolutely. It certainly is late. <laughs> um, I think we can probably... Right, so what I'm going to do... 
at this point is just bring out that T. I can remove this T actually and I can remove this T and then make it T squared which is important because I've got to try and collect together all the squares oh I've got to collect together all the squares T terms and the non-squared T terms So we've got that one there and that one there. So let's pull pull them together. Everything that is not a T, all these other terms here all have T's. So I'm going to take those and move them over here a bit. And I'm going to take this and this. None, no T's anywhere in this. And just checking again, everything else has a T. I can also then move this over there as well. So I'm going to, oh, put, put that down there a minute. I'm going to take this and put this up here and then take that, remove that. But I'm moving that across the equal sign. So I need to change the sign, you see. So this one then becomes minus. And I could put that equals there. And so hopefully if I didn't screw up, this is this is uh, the same equation rearranged. And the whole point of this is this expression is then the constant in the quadratic that I have to solve. You'll see what it makes sense, right? This will make sense, believe me. I want to collect together all of the T's now. Um, so that's a T term, that's a T term. And I just don't want to move across the equal sign just yet. So I tell you what, I'm going to put this, actually, I'm going to do this because otherwise I'm going to run out of space and stuff. So I'll do this and then we'll pull it out. The, I, hey, I can take this here, actually. If I take this and go, zoop. yeah, this is plus. Because the two terms are added, these terms are added together, right? And then, oh, let's take this off here. We've got la la la, la la la, that one. And this one, that's another T term. And then this one, another T term. Oh. Get that in there. It's T, T, T term, T term. Right, these are squared terms. So I want to keep them to one side. And this is also a squared term. That is just a T term. This one is as well. Yeah. touch that up a little 
Why? Why? Oh, let's take that T term. And we go, boom. There, right. And then this is also a T term. And then I th hopefully we've only got squareds left. These are all T squared terms. So T, 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 T squared, T squared, T squared, T squared, T squared, T squared. So what I'm going to do is take this, I can pull out the T. Put parentheses around this. And we have to remove every instance of T. I can remove this one. I can remove this one. I can remove this one. And this one. And this one. And remove this and remove this and just bunch it up a bit so that one bec becomes v2 v1 x p1 x plus 2 v1 y multiplied by p1 y minus v2 x multiplied by p1 x minus v2 v1 x uh, p2 x plus 2v 2x where v2x is a variable it's not v, you know just make that a little clearer that oh it's like a, a subscript <laughs> um oh now I'm missing something here, so I need to go back. I just, what did I do? All right, this is multiplied together, right? P two x minus this multiplied by this minus this multiplied by this plus this multiplied by this and go in here and that's all times t <laughs> be a miracle if this works and um Yeah, then plus this. So what I want to do finally is pull out the T squared. Let me just write this down. T squared multiplied by, and uh, we want to put everything in there except for the t squared so i take that off take that off take that off take that off take off the t squared take off the t squared take off the t squared and um oh yeah so it's plus T squared multiplied by all of this. We go that plus that plus that. And the whole point of this exercise was to rearrange the equation so that we have a quadratic form that is something t squared multiplied by something plus t multiplied by something 
plus something equals zero. And um, if there is no mistake in here, I can use this to work out the thing on the Desmos sheet. <laughs> Feels like an age ago. Uh, I need to rearrange it so it's all equals zero. So I just need to do one more thing and then you should be there. So I take this and put it here and then plus this oh let me write it like that oh wait a minute that's that's the last one okay that and uh, where it was, I actually have to, because I moved this across the equal sign, we have to reverse this. And um, I'm not going to bother to sit there and reverse every single term. That is make it negative, it was positive. I'm just going to do it like this. <laughs> um so equals zero. So providing I haven't made any mistakes, then what I, I should have here is that we're solving this for t. And um, what I'm going to do shrink that down and then maybe I can shrink this down a little bit as well. I think I can still read that. So what do we do now? We I've rearranged this whole equation so that um, we have a quadratic form. And then once we have the quadratic form, we can use the quadratic formula for solving equations of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. The solution is x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. That's the pattern. Well, a is this. I'm going to just write this in green, actually. a is this. b is this C is this so if I work out what a B and C are then I can use this equation to work out the time um, you know I put X here but in fact I'm looking for T so let me just rewrite that So a t squared plus b t plus c equals zero. And of these, the one that we want is the earliest collision. So to go back to this, what I'm trying to do is work out the time of the collision. Now what's interesting is, of course, there are two solutions to where these are just at the right distance. This is the first one. And that's the second. So you could have you could have up to two solutions, which um, makes a lot of sense because uh, we have a quadratic formula and quadratic formulae have two. And we're looking for the earliest solution. That's the one that happens first. If we look at the formula, we can see here that the earliest solution is actually going to be this one because that makes the number smaller. The square root is always positive, obviously. Uh, so the, 
of the two solutions, one of them is going to be give you a smaller number. It's always going to be the, the one with the negative. So we actually want in our case to do the minus b squared of 4c. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm definitely not going to try and take all of this and put it in here and come out with another formula because that's just insane. What I'm going to do is see if I can work out a, b and c here in my sheet. So a equals, so it's v1x squared. That's v1.x squared. I have to change the notation a little bit. So that's vx squared plus um, v2x squared. v2x squared plus 2 and the two multi two times then multiply together now will be a way for me to verify if ball pi of these Basically, v2, this term here that's under the square root, this needs to be greater than or equal to zero if there's a collision. So just with this part, I can diagnose and just see if, if there's a mistake or if it, or not. Um, if debugging this would be, would be hell, actually. Um, I'm a little concerned about there's no squared here. Why, why is that? There's a kind of an asymmetry. I would expect... It's on the T. Yeah, I, I can I see that's wrong. I don't know where I made the mistake there, but I just... That should definitely be a squared, uh, which it wasn't. So somewhere something, I let something slip. So we'll just put that in as a squared. Just one check is just to make sure there's a symmetry. You can see Vx squared, V1x squared, V2x squared, V1y squared, V2y squared, plus 2V1x, uh, V2x. And there's V1Y, V2Y, two times with a minus on there. So, okay, that looks, that looks right. So, two times that plus V1Y, V1 dot Y squared plus V2Y squared, V2 dot Y squared minus 2v1y 2v1 dot y uh, v2y v2 dot v2 dot y Put a times in there just so that it's a bit clearer and cluttered. In theory, that would give me. There's an error. What's the error? Cannot access the coordinate of a number. Okay, because v2 is capitalized. I mean, it uh, should not be. There we are. I've got a number. In this particular case, A is allegedly 82.6241. Okay, let's try and do B now. B equals two times V1X P1X, two times V1 dot X, times p1 dot x plus two 
2 times V1x plus x 2 times that, that's fine. Plus 2 V1y P1y plus 2 times V1y P1y V1 dot y times P1 dot y. Minus 2 V2x P1x minus 2 times V2x P1x. Minus 2 times V1x P2x. P2 dot X plus 2 times V2X P2X V2 dot X times P2 dot X Minus, was that two times? That is the two times, yes. Two times V2Y P1Y. V2 dot Y times P2 dot Y. Plus, was that minus? Right, I'm gonna have to. Let <coughs> me. Uh, gonna try and um, just put them. Oh, come on, move it here. Thank you. I'm going to compare them side by side. Oh, I was get, getting lost. Oh, monitor, stop cutting out, please. Right. That's a bit easier. Right, two times V1x times P1x plus two times V1y times P1y minus two times v2 x p1 x minus v1 x p2 x plus 2 v2 x times p2 x minus 2 v2 y times p1 y minus two times V one Y times P two Y plus two V two Y times P two Y. And the result of that one is that um, I've got a value for B. I'm just going to check that again. 2 times V1x plus P1x plus 2V1y P1y minus 2V2x P1x minus 2V1x P2x plus 2V2x P2x minus 2 v2y p1y minus 2 v1y p2y plus 2 v2y 
times P2Y. And that looks correct. And, um, and then we need the C. And C is P1X, P1.X, I should say, all squared minus minus 2p1.x p2.x plus p2.x squared plus p1.y squared minus 2p1.y p2y plus p P two Y squared plus minus R one plus R two squared doesn't like something P one X squared. 2p1.x times p2.x plus p2.x squared p1y squared 2p1.y p times p2.y p2 can I not add a number and a point What's the point it's trying to add? There we go. I was missing a dot. So, um, wonderful. Uh, if, <laughs> if this works, be a miracle. We now want to take the minus B minus the square root of well, actually just just do the determinant first of all b squared plus or minus b squared minus 4ac so we do b squared minus 4ac and of course it's wrong so then it's a, a question of debugging it huh They do collide, but according to this, the end result saying, eh, hey, don't collide. Which is a bit of a problem, because they do collide. V1x... So I'm lo looking for, a pat for the patterns here to see if there's something that breaks the pattern. V1x squared... My monitor keeps keep, keeps um. That's not good. My monitor keeps doing that. Stop it. Yeah, I'm having technical problems with my monitor now. Just wish it would. Uh, well, maybe it will settle down. V1x squared plus V2x squared plus V1y squared plus V2y squared. Yeah, it's interesting. Why is this negative? Probably. Sh yep. Maybe they should both be negative. <laughs> well, that's interesting. It looks like I might have made a sign error in that one. Um, it's just a guess. But the most common mistakes are sign errors. So there is now a solution. Uh, 
right no solution here. right let's see if it says here there's no solution so because the determinant is negative therefore no solution that looks plausible no solution there is a solution wow look at that it looked like there was just one error you see that says there's a solution which there is but if I change the situation such now it's negative it this is actually looking encouraging uh, we'll see the whole formula All right this make this D for the determinant and it's like minus B minus the square root of D divided by 2a undefined because there's no solution no solution why because they never collide but now there is and according to this the collision is at 1.3 seconds, so I imagine that's actually not correct. Whoa! I can't believe it. I almost got it perfect. It was just that one sign. But that's that, that that's correct. I don't believe it. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> that was good that was a good exercise look it says they collide at 1.33 ta-da yeah. oh my god alright well um, that's really good because that means I'll be able to sort of finish this off which is the uh, intention i've only got one person watching at the moment and that's me because i guess i have this up here don't i yeah watching myself it's always the best <laughs> it's always the safest approach uh, on your own so um where is the thing I want to make them bounce off each other. So I can do that. Um, what I'll do is, I have, since I have the time of the collision, I'm going to call this TC. Oh, equals, please. There we are, TC. TC is the collision. Collision time. And then uh, where I'm showing the dotted balls the dotted spheres which is here we're going to put the, the um, positions of the spheres at any time I'm going to oh. all right um, uh, oh yeah right so PT one and pt2 I already have those the position of the thing at time t i think it'd be useful to set a function for i need to set it up so that i can see the bounce so what i'll do is um do t i'll call it u1t so this is the position at time t of Uh, post the collision and I call it P1 t one moment I called it P1 T PQ let me call it Q1 T yeah because I already have P1 T I've got a good Q1 T so Q1 T is going to be the position taking into account the bounce 
Um, but I'll do that in a moment because what I want to do is is have a function that gives me the um, the velocity. Ah. The collision response. If I want to make them bounce off each other, I'm going to have to. Let me just stop this here. It goes like that. Right, so actually you have to do the collision response first. So what, what needs to happen is that if you imagine a line going through the centers of the two balls at the moment of collision, um, then I need to project the velocity onto that axis. And in order to do the bounce, it's a case of swapping the velocities of the two uh, balls along that axis. If they are the same mass, that's perfectly uh, fine. You just swap them. If they are different masses, then you need to use a formula that gives you the velocities afterwards. Obviously, the heavier object gets moved less than the lighter object. I'm going to set the radius of both of these to all one a moment. Going to change the result. Um, there we go. Uh, at one point three. Okay. So I want to know the position of the spheres at the collision time. So I'm going to call that Q. C1, position of the first ball at the collision time, I'll just call it C1 and the other one will be C2. I already have the time, so it's actually P1 plus the velocity of the ball, which is V1, multiplied by TC. Um, so what should happen then? There we go. You can see this one here, one that's blinking. It's not allowing me to, to edit it. It's a bug. Come on. There we go. So I put an X there to mark the spot. So what happens there is you go blah, 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 blah. That's the point of collision. And then um, the second point, which I'm going to call C2, equal P2 plus V2. TC and we'll also put an X on there. Maybe change the color so this is the or um, orange one and this is the cyan one. And then we can see those are the point where they collide. That gives us the axis at the point time of collision the axis at the time of collision um, which I'm going to call n uh, as I will need to I was I'll need to normalize that but I'm going to create a function well actually let me create a function n that normalizes a vector p equals the um, p dot x divided by the square root of p dot x squared 
plus p dot y hmm, squared, so comma, I'm dividing the vector by its length. This then will normalize any vector. Let's um, let's see about this because what I want to do is make the the collision occur. So I've got marked on here where the two x's are. So I have the axis of collision, and then I've created a normalized function. And so now I want to create, you know, my axis of collision. What shall I letter shall I give that? I'm going to call it G. I don't know. G is going to be the axis of collision. And this is the normalized uh, thing of the two vectors C1 and C2. So C1 minus C2. And so that should give me the axis of collision. I don't, do I have something to, I can draw a line between say P1, if I go P1, oh, if I wanted to do uh, yeah, P1 plus um, P, P1 plus, plus G actually, plus G, T. Am I seeing that? No. P1 plus GT. Not sure why that's not working. G dot X. Okay, and G dot O. Oh. Too small. Yeah, let's see. P1, that's the center, oh, of the axis of collision, maybe I want C1, C, C1 plus G, T, there we go, that worked. Right, G, T, I should probably do C2 minus C1 if I actually want to do this the right way around. like so. So that purple line there is actually the um, collision point. So if I want to um, now exchange the two velocities, I need to project the velocity onto the the axis. So what shall I call? I'll call this u is the velocity after collision. So u1 is the velocity of the first ball projected onto the axis of collision. Which I'm going to make a green color if it allows me to. There we go. Right onto the axis of collision. So in order to get that vector, what I need to do is take the dot product of the velocity, which is V1. And um, I don't have a dot product function on here, so why don't I make one? So this is going to be, uh, I don't know, uh, I was normally, let's call it dot. And uh, of A, B, uh, A, B, because capital A, B are used, right, is equal A dot X, B dot X plus, a dot y, b dot y. Um, U1, in order to do that, I need a dot product of the two. Um, so that's dot. And if we take g, which is my normal of collision. So this is the velocity projected of the first ball projected onto there. Ah, uh, but, I, but that's not enough because I need to then multiply that by the vector g. So I need to do that. Right, there we go. And now um, what I have is um, 
a vector which is the velocity projection of the velocity onto the normal of collision at the point of collision. And if I do that with the next one, so dot product, and then multiply it to the normal, and then multiply by the normal. And so I have the two. And now what I need to do is, um, <laughs> I'm almost there. I might actually get this finished um, because I need to make them bounce. So what I have to do is figure out what the velocity is going to be post the collision point. So, and. Uh, to do the collision response, what I need to do is swap the velocities along the axis. So if I have u1 and u2, um, what shall I number? Th I'm going to call them u3 and u4. It's not ideal, but naming, you start running out of the names for variables. u3 is going to be the velocity of the first ball after the collision. And that is going to be equal to u1, which is the velocity before the collision. I have to subtract from that its component along the collision axis, which I calculated as being, no, let's start, no, wait a minute, start again. It's the velocity v1 at the point of collision, right, minus u1 if i do that i've subtracted from the velocity of the ball the component along the axis of collision and then what i have to do is add u2 so i don't know if you see what's happening i'm taking the velocity of the ball subtracting its component on the axis of collision and adding the component of the other ball if i do this for both I'm actually swapping the velocities along the axis of collision, which is um, there we go, like that. Which, when the two masses are the same, that's what you get. You get two. You, you, it comes across like this, boom, and does that. You've seen that, like Newton's cradle or whatever, right? This boom, boom thing. It's actually swapping the velocity. So because one ball was stationary, when the other one hits, this the first one was stationary, so the ball that's colliding becomes stationary. This is how it works. So if, if you have two that are colliding at different velocities together, you just swap the velocities. And so that's what I simulated here. So what I now have is U3 and U4 should give me the velocity of the ball's post-collision so now with a little bit of a construction, I should be able to um, animate the collision. We're very close. Now, right now, the position here, when I draw the dotted line, the dotted circle, that is uh, driven by, you know, position at time t. So what I'm going to do is just... Um, change that a little bit. So PT1, I'm going to just call this Q. So I have Q, X, and QY. What Q is going to be is, and 1, Q1. Q1 is going to be the, the position taking into account the bounce. And so this one should be Q2. And here we do Q2 as well, I hope. Yeah, well, you know what? Um, I don't, I don't believe in the universe either, actually, uh, because um, the universe sort of created people, and I don't believe in people. And so, since I don't believe in people um, anymore, I no longer believe in the universe either. There you go. There's a piece of logic for you. Um, very flawed logic, but uh, um, anyway, Q Q one equals, let's just see if I do P T1, P underscore T1, 
and Q2, this is just a test, P underscore T2, should change nothing. Now, if I am animating, there we go, we're animating, and we can see that's working very nice still, right? And what I do now is I use a conditional. What's the syntax for that again? Yeah, so we do this. Um, and um, uh, if t is less than um, the time of collision, which I, I calculated like feels like seven years ago, that's tc. If 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 t is less than tc, then we return pt1. Now, what this is beginning to work. So what I do then is I put this in here and I put pt2. So what's happening? You'll notice that they disappear at the moment of collision. No, no, I. Uh, you you misunderstand me, Wagu. I I know that people exist. I just don't believe them. <laughs> I don't I don't believe them. I don't believe in them either. Would you look at what we've done? <laughs> so yes, it's just the state of humanity. Yeah. So as you can see, the spheres, the dotted ones. They disappear at the moment of collision, which is quite right, because they're only being, you know, defined for t less than the point of contact. Post the point of contact, what do we want to do? We want to plot. I'll just put the expression in. We have the point of collision. I did work that out. That's C1. And what's great about this is you can just build this up little bit by bit. You see, look, I did C1. You can see this is working. Now, if I do it here, C2. So what's this saying? See, this is saying, stop. it's saying, if you're less than the point of collision, then you just draw, you allow the bolts to draw normally and at and beyond the point of collision, you just draw the collision point. And so that's why they stop there. You can see the other dots are moving because that's the actual original path. Okay, so that's looking good. Now we need to add to it the new velocity, which if you remember is u3 and u4. So if I do plus u3, that looks a little bit weird. Let's see. I'm trying to make this thing bounce. I'm not so close. Um, what happened though when I said plus u3 times zero? Okay, u3, which is the velocity of the first ball after the collision point, multiplied by t, t, Ha 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 ha! I'm almost there. Because I'd 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 love to compare notes on this because I, it's, I I'm a fan of Alan Watts. I listened to a lot of Alan Alan Watts for years now, and it's it's a journey. You, you can listen to Alan Watts for years, and you're still getting to the bottom of it. But um, he was obviously he was very Zen does you know studied zen i mean not as a zen for himself but he studied it as a phenomenon if you if you will he was also very um knowledgeable about language and so this is where this comes up interesting okay well i'm nearly let's see if i oh i think i've done it i was in i actually got it i think we now have this was by the way what i started this stream to do was this simulation so and I think I've done it let's just try a different kind of collision example here we go look at that is that good or what <laughs> bonk 
Shall we? Shall we just check uh, what happens if, you know, I can get them going towards each other? So we'll just do this like this, and this like this. Here we go. Bonk. See, it's working. Look at that. Dunk. <laughs> Ah, change change the uh, radius of one of them. Here we go. Dunk. So a little recap of 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 what happened here is that basically I started off with, you know, just making the spheres that could move and um, being able to set the initial positions and the initial velocity and then there was the question when do they collide and so if you didn't see it i did this from first principles and um, from the formula which is this thing here that basically says at time t the distance between the two balls needs to be the same as the sum of the as the square of the sum of the radii of the two balls from this i did all of the algebra to work out um, that it was equivalent to this formula well actually the equivalent to this formula here where i was able to get it down into quadratic form so that you have a b c and there was a mistake which i managed to guess this to fix the ABC are calculated here so it's only a little bit of uh, math involved a B and C of the quadratic formula and then using the um, solution to the quadratic equations minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC over 2A to get the earliest solution of the 2 TC and then um, from the knowing where the collision occurs at that point, getting the axis of collision, which is, you can see there's this normalized axis of collision there. And then doing the dot product to work out the projections of the velocities along the axis and um, swapping the velocities of the two at the point of collision and then putting an expression in here that plots before and after the collision, and there's the result. So I did this entirely from first principles in this stream, 